Hey, Mark, what's the best way to get new people into the bourbon and whiskey hobby? That's a great question, Dan. Hey, this is Mark Still. I'm here with Dan Cavallari. And after a long, 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 long time, we're back in our headquarters in Dan's garage. Still still distance a, a wee bit, but uh, partially vaccinated on both sides of the table. And we're excited. It's uh, As I mentioned in the little temporary episode explaining where we've been, it's just tough to stay motivated remotely. Yes, very. <laughs> yeah. So finally, we felt comfortable enough to do this. We're super excited to be here. And during the pandemic, I think a lot of things have changed. I think a lot of folks have flowed into hobbies that maybe they didn't know they were about to flow into. And mm. one of those is certainly whiskey. So it's a good question, Dan. How do we bring people in? I, I think that there's probably a few do's and don'ts. Let's not try and make the exhaustive list, but let's point out the obvious. Let's yeah. talk about some things that I think help people mm -hmm. come into any hobby, be it bikes or music or or whiskey. And I think some things that turn people off. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I guess, you know, <laughs> one, one of the obvious things is, is what worked for us, right? Like, so, you know, you were already into whiskey when, when we started hanging out. And, uh, the reason I felt good about getting into whiskey was because I felt welcome and it wasn't like a condescending experience. And so we all just got together and drank. And that was for me, the biggest thing. So, I would say the do's. The do's. For the, the first do is you got to have some whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> we, we do here. Why don't we start with what are we sipping on? Oh, yeah. Good call. Uh, we're, we're sipping on Calumet Farm uh, 12 years, single rack black. Uh, this is uh, limited to 19 barrels, and it is 94 proof. Outstanding. Uh, I don't know a ton about Calumet Farms, but uh, a friend of mine brought over the 14-year recently and it was excellent yeah um but it's also expensive <laughs> yeah yeah there's a lot of x's in there <laughs> yeah so uh the the 14 year is um 125 dollars i think and this was 85 so i wanted to see you know is is the is it close yeah is the 14 year you know 40 35 dollars better and what do you think? I'm sipping it. It's delicious. I, I, I too don't know much about that. Yeah. You know, it's, I, it was long enough ago that I, I don't remember specifically what I loved about the 14 year, but it mm -hmm. was really like, it was, it was bowling me over good. Um, and this is also excellent, but I would say there's, I don't know, maybe it's a proof difference. I'm not sure. I'd have to go and look, but yeah, I think, um, somewhere I think I heard this is Buffalo trace distilled product. Mm -hmm. It certainly, it certainly could be that based on the taste of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but delicious. I don't feel bad about spending 85 on this. I, I don't think I would either. 12-year-old 12, no. 12 age-dated, age -dated, uh, decent proof, mm -hmm. you know, one, one proof point higher than what's-its-name, Blanton's, mm -hmm. uh, and delicious. Yeah. it's and, and like, I, like I said, I was getting that chocolate kind of flavor. It's really good. Yeah. It's really complex. So simple, easy drinking. Too. So, you know, so, so back to do's and don'ts. Do's, have some whiskey yeah. handy. Uh, <laughs> we have some handy here. We have some handy whiskey there. <laughs> yeah. And... um and if we run out, we got all that over there too. Yeah. And I think this is a good way. It might be a little pricey for a newbie, but, mm -hmm. uh, but the proof's reasonable. It drinks, mm -hmm. it drinks nice. And, um, you know, one of the do's is have, have something that's, that's approachable. Mm -hmm. We talk yeah. about approachable whiskeys and this is certainly approachable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I guess if, if I was to say the first do, you know, aside from having whiskey is, you know, if you do want to try something nice get together with friends and split the costs. And Absolutely. And that's a way to get a nice bottle without having to break your own bank. I think sharing goes both ways too. So sharing the cost of a bottle, but mm -hmm. also uh, maybe this because I like doing this, but share what you got. Yeah. So be, will be willing to open it and pour those, those bottles. Because if you get into this, what you may find, not that this has happened to either one of us, but what you may <laughs> find is, is so many bottles open that you begin to wonder how might you drink those bottles? Right, right. And one of the best ways is to let other people help you. Yes. I, I've never experienced that ever. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently whiskey makes you lie about stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we've got, we got plenty of open ones to drink today. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so have some approachable, have some whiskey, mm -hmm. have it be approachable. Yeah. Uh, and share, share both the cost of bottles and mm -hmm. share what you got with other people. Oh, yeah. Those are good things. What else brings people? i tell you, I, I got one. I, I really want to touch and we It's not like we don't talk about this a lot, but let people drink how they want to drink. Mm -hmm. Please don't, please don't tell that new person that maybe they've been into gin cocktails or maybe they've been into vodka. Don't tell them they got to drink 120 proof whiskey neat. Yeah. yeah. They need to drink that whiskey. However, makes them happy. And, and if you're willing 
to give up an ounce of your whiskey. Hopefully they take a little sip. Maybe yeah. they splash a little water. But if ultimately they want to pour it on top of some Coca-Cola, I think you got to let them. Right. Yeah, let them. <laughs> it doesn't mean it can't you know, bust their balls a little bit. Well, Just, just a little, just well, in a friendly way. You know? well, but, <laughs> but we know this about these hobbies. People yeah. will ask questions. Yeah. It's not as if our hobby is life insurance. Yeah, yeah. They're going to want to ask us questions mm-hmm. about this. Yeah. So let it go. Yeah. If if that means they're going to pour your nice whiskey over some ice, mm-hmm. splash a little ginger ale in it, that might be the thing yeah. that gets them to go, well, gosh, may, maybe whiskey's better than what I remember from that poor time in college. Right, right. Let them do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the learning curve, right? It's, uh, it's the, the journey from, man, I remember Jack and Coke in college to, you know, now I'm sipping on George T. Stagg. You know, what, what happened in between? A lot of things happened in between, you know? Some people don't have an in-between, which is one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this. It sure seems like people go from Jack and Coke to standing in line for a bottle of Patty right. <laughs> really quick. <laughs> yeah. And that's a, to me, that's a shame because yeah. there's so much good whiskey in the middle and there's mm-hmm. so much fun to have. Yeah. Um, and if you do that, I think, I think the hobby becomes the chase. The hobby becomes hunting. It mm-hmm. becomes mm-hmm. being the pariah customer. It's acquiring. To see come. Yeah. yeah. And I just, I don't think that's the, f- I don't, that's not my fun. Right. That's not the fun I have. Right. It. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about that before. I mean, you and I both have sizable collections, but for me, I want to, I want to open them mm-hmm. and, and I don't want them just sitting there. I mean, right now I want them sitting there cause that's where I filmed the videos, but <laughs> yes, that, so, something's got to sit there. Yeah. Yeah. But, but at the same time, I mean, that George T. Stagg, I've only had that sitting on there because I'm waiting for a moment for us to try it. I don't want to just sit there sipping on it by myself. I, yeah. want, I want that experience of opening it with friends. So agreed. I have some bottles like that too. Some of them are still unopened and some of them I just gave up and opened and yeah, been yeah. drinking them. Yeah, Sorry. That's, what I, that's what I did with the McKenna, <laughs> which the McKenna, I, man, I'm going to film a back to the bottle for that one. Oh man. You are? Yeah. Promise? I am. All right. I am. It's on my schedule. I, I made a schedule. A schedule. <laughs> nice. I like schedule. Getting motivated, man. Schedules and motivation. Love mm-hmm. them. So what else? What else brings people in? We're going to, we're going to share, we're going to have some whiskey. It's going to be approachable. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're not going to bust people's what's for drinking it. However, we're going to let them, the great, the great profit booker. The great profit. (laughs) The great profit (laughs) booker. No, (laughs) you drink your whiskey any damn well you please. Yeah, for sure. I I would also say as a don't, uh, I guess if we're going to cover our first don't. Let's go to the dark side. I'm going to the dark side. Don't feel like you have to buy an expensive bottle to be Absolutely. learned and, you know, bourbon wise, you don't have to, we've said this a gazillion times. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're looking, if you're looking to get into, if you're for whatever reason, stumbling on this podcast episode and you're looking to get into whiskey, go out and buy. And I say this all the time, go out and buy some wild Turkey one Oh one. It's 20 yeah. some odd dollars and it's fantastic. Uh, it's something that I would like to have on my shelf all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to go out and buy a hundred dollar bottle. No. In fact, you'll look smarter. Yeah. If you show up with the carefully chosen, moderately priced bottle. Absolutely. than If you just show up with the, whatever flavor of the week is. Yeah. I spent a lot of money, so it must be good. You know? Yeah. And you won't know either. When Melissa and I were on our honeymoon, we were, we went to Napa Valley and, uh, that was one of the reasons we went there mm-hmm. was to try and learn something about wine. Yeah. And we bought some, what were supposed to be really nice bottles, but we wouldn't have known that sure. at that point. We saved those bottles for a couple of years until yeah. we had an idea of what good wine should taste like. Right. I think you do that with whiskey. If you go straight to, straight to Pappy, you don't know if it's really good or not. Right. Right. Yeah. And there's, and there's just so many really inexpensive bottles that are so fantastic. We've talked about that ad nauseum here. Yeah. So there's just no need, first of all. But second of all, you know, you're going to want to try different things when you're first getting into it. And you're going to be able to try a whole lot more if you're not spending your whole bourbon budget or whiskey budget on one bottle. Yeah. I've always been surprised how many or how few busts I've bought. Yeah. I mean, how few bottles I've bought that were just terrible. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it happens. It's going to happen. So, yeah. so be prepared for that. But mm-hmm. if you're just a little bit thoughtful about it and yeah. if the budget's tight, I wish we could always support the small craft distillers, but if the budget's tight, I got to guide you towards the major players because mm-hmm. I know they won't let you down. Right. You know what we should do, Mark? And I feel like this is something that should go on our website and live there is we should have a list of here's your first five bottles of whiskey you should try. And they're all under like that. 30 bucks or whatever. Yeah. And they're all excellent. We know they're excellent. So we know that one of them will suit you. Yeah. And we can, we can mix it up. There can be a high rye bourbon. There can yeah. be, there can be some dickel in there. Yeah. But that's a good idea. Cause you know, our very first episode yeah. way back when, yeah. before we knew how deep the pandemic would go, was right. all about, can I get a decent bottle of whiskey for 25 yeah, bucks? Exactly. And you can. 
Yeah. I think I like that. Let's do that. It's yeah. recorded now. So yeah, I was going to say, it's we a, won't be able to get out of it. It's a good thing too, because <laughs> as we drink all these bottles that are open. Here. Yeah. And, and by the way, I, I think, and of course you can't, uh, folks listening can't see it, but that Calumet is the most expensive bottle on the table. Yes. There's yep. uh there's that $85, there's a $60, should only be 50, but it's a $60 bottle of mm-hmm. uh, Four Roses Small Batch Select. Yep. There's the Rare Breed Rye, which is, I think, a $60 bottle. Mm-hmm. So um, that little Woody Creek that we'll talk about at some point is about a $50 bottle. This cost me three dollars, so I don't know how much well, it, it costs cost somebody <laughs> something. I don't, I don't know how much that costs. I don't either. You. Anyway, so so even on a day like this, where we certainly could have drug along the high dollar stuff, that's yeah. just not what that, I don't gravitate straight towards that. No, no. I mean, I, I look at what I've been drinking recently. I mean, that Cooper's over there, which another video I want to do. Thirty dollar bottle, one of the best bottles I've had in a long time. So yeah, that's yeah. that's if you see Cooper's, I mean. 30 bucks. Holy cow. That is solid. Yeah. So yeah, again, you don't have to spend big bucks. Just you don't, don't think you have to spend all the money. Yeah. Um, I think another don't is around proof. Mm-hmm. We talk a lot about not being proof hounds yeah. and, um, a lot of whiskey geeks will guide you straight towards everything's barrel proof. Everything mm-hmm. needs to be in excess of 120 proof. Right. Everything must be drunk neat. Yeah. None of that's correct. Right. Uh, the purpose of barrel proof whiskeys is so you can proof it where you want. Mm-hmm. And to me too, uh, typically barrel proof whiskeys aren't filtered. They're yeah. or at least non chill filtered. Mm-hmm. That's a big thing for me, but you don't have to drink that stuff no. in the first place. You certainly don't need to think you should drink if somebody hands you 140 proof whiskey, you don't need to sip it neat. Put some water yeah. in if you like. Put some put it on. Some, find a place yeah. that fits. Again, back to the profit. Uh, Booker No supposedly kept a bottle of Perrier on his yeah. kitchen table. He would drink his Booker's over ice. Right, right. You, you drink it however you want. <laughs> and don't feel like the only way to drink something is neat. And also, yeah. please don't tell people that. Yeah. Please encourage your friends to try. Take a sip neat. Yeah. Sure. See what it's like. Right. But find that place and don't yeah. shame them into not wanting to even bother with it. I will say there is one wrong way to do it, especially if you're trying to get into whiskey. Don't shoot it. <laughs> yes. Well, okay, sure. <laughs> so sure. This happened to somebody I know. I, you know, I gave him a sample of something nice and he's like, I'll throw it back like a man. Mm-hmm. And it it was disaster. <laughs> not a yeah. good way to experience whiskey. Um, no, that's... Uh, yeah, don't uh, take your time with yeah, it. Yeah, 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 take it, your time. It took years and years for that whiskey to get that way. Don't right. feel like you have to knock it back. You don't got to get it over with in half a second. I will say, though, I want to stick to how you want. Mm-hmm. If that's how you want, I was willing to give you the whiskey. Uh, yeah, it's true. I guess. Do what you want to do. With. I guess. It'll, br- it'll break my heart a little, but I'll let it, you do it. I'll cry a little bit inside. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah. I was willing to let go of the whiskey. <laughs> I may not be willing to let you do that yeah. eight times in my house because right. you might not be a fun person after right, that. Right. Not you, Dan, yeah. but <laughs> the, the general. One might not be a pleasant Maybe person. Maybe that's my new thing. Maybe I start shooting. Is yeah. that why you brought that up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So any other don'ts? Well, I, I, just uh, as a quick follow-up to that uh, with the proof, um, I will say that every time I've introduced somebody to a really high-proof whiskey, mm-hmm. they haven't liked it. Yeah. And and that's not surprising, but I will give them that sample so that they can kind of have that uh, spectrum defined. You know, most people I know have started with Bullet for whatever reason. Because, you know, it's ubiquitous, so yep. everybody starts it's with everywhere. Bullet. And, and there's nothing wrong with Bullet. It's not my favorite anymore, because but that's where I started kind of too. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't really start there, but, you know, I made that progression through it. Yep. And so, you know, at some point you start getting into this rabbit hole of whiskeys and they're, they're so intimidating. And so what I like to do is say, well, here's Bullet over here. Here's something a little bit more complex. And then here's this blast of fire and, you know, whatever. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's shocking to the system. But I think as you start developing that sense of where everything is on that spectrum, you mm-hmm. start to say, okay, well, I'll try that again and see if I can pick out those complexities besides just the heat of yeah. it, you know. It is shocking. Yeah, yeah. And I think that you know, if you've got... Uh, I happen to keep a bottle of the regular Henry McKenna around mm-hmm. just because of the connection to my dad. Yeah. That's closer to what he drank yeah. in the day than the 10 year old is. Yeah. And it's an 80 proof whiskey. Yeah. So if I need to, I can pour that. But remember, yeah. you don't have to keep, don't feel like you have to buy an extra bottle of low proof whiskey. Right. Just take some water. Yeah. Uh, with, if you really want to be accurate, whiskey advocates got a lovely little proof calculator. Yeah, I have two ounces of whiskey. Yeah. I want it to be 80 proof or uh-huh. 85 or 90 proof. Yeah. It is currently 110 proof. How much water do I need? I can't math. So I put a little bit of water in <laughs> and down it goes. Well, <laughs> math or not, yeah. either way, yeah. don't feel like you have to keep something on hand or force somebody into right. drinking something they don't, that you know they're not going to like. Right, right. 
uh, or at least they're going to struggle with. Just use some water. Speaking of forcing people to drink things that they don't want to, that they don't like, um, I'm going to go on the opposite tack. I'm going to be welcoming here and say, Mark, would you mm-hmm. like some, would you like, can I pour you some McKenna uh, bottled and bond over there? Why sure, Dan, that would be oh, lovely. Okay. I'm going to take off my headphones. So just give me a moment. Okay. That bottle you hear opening is not whiskey. It's uh, San Pellegrino. I'm going to need your glass. Or you can pour it yourself. Well, i got to have a little bit of... Ugh. I don't want to adulterate my whiskey without some water in it there. Well, you're clear in the glass. I yeah. Know. I'm cracking this uh, because um, I have evolved with my thinking about McKenna. I, re- I remember being just over there in your kitchen yeah. and seeing a McKenna sitting up on the counter or yeah. the cabinet top of the cabinet it was on the bookcase oh somewhere yeah. it was somewhere in your house yeah and you didn't you didn't seem to care much for it yeah i didn't and um you know my, my wife really liked it uh mckenna is one of those ones that's become sort of a, i give you a big pour. you did <laughs> <laughs> as i was leaving melissa said do you guys usually drink a lot when you do that no, no. <laughs> I, I don't need to have i don't need to lie yeah well if you want to dump yeah, some of that in mine you can me. I'll, I'll take that bullet. <laughs> <laughs> bullet. Ar, 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 ar. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's been several years since I had a bottle of McKenna. And then in the meantime, it, it kind of just exploded in popularity, mm-hmm. which was bizarre to me because I didn't like it. Um, and I, I stumbled on this bottle sitting on the shelf and I think I paid 50 bucks for it. Yeah. Um, which I'm sure would make you balk because I'm sure you bought it for four seconds, four, four cents on the dollar or uh, something. You know? uh, not that cheap, but yeah. I did, I did uh, take myself out of that market around when I started seeing it on the shelves at 45. Yeah. I went, eh, that's yeah. enough. Well, I bought this because I thought to myself, you know, all right, I tried it way back then. My, I know my palate has evolved since then. Uh, let's see where I come back to it. And the thing is, so I cracked it open and I'm going to do a back to the bottle on this one. So you guys can watch the video and, uh, see, see this reaction in real time, but the, the, I still don't like it, <laughs> but I do recognize the complexities of it that people do like, like I can see why people like this. Mm-hmm. I still don't, it's still not me. It's still not my how thing. How do you explain? I know how much you like the heaven Hill seven year bottled and bond. Mm. I can't, <laughs> that's another, that's another do. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't, don't be afraid to be a hypocrite. <laughs> Well, it's, I don't think it's hypocritical. I don't know if this is a do or a don't, but yeah. as people come in, remember that whiskey is not a thing. There, mm. Even if you buy the same brand, the same release, there can be differences between barrels. There can be sister barrels that sit next to each other on the rick that mm-hmm. just don't taste the same. Yeah. And when a company like Heaven Hill um, takes their whiskey, because they have not one burp. There's a bourbon recipe. I think it's 78% corn, 12% yeah. rye, 10% malted barley. Maybe those two are switched. Mm-hmm. But that makes up the Elijah Craig. That makes yeah. up the Heaven Hill Bottled and Bond. That makes up the Henry McKenna. You think if it's the same recipe off the same stills, it should be the same, but right. that's not the truth. So they're probably pulling the seven-year stuff out of the same place they had the old six-year stuff, mm-hmm. which may be miles away in a different warehouse yeah. and a different floor, et cetera, and so on, mm-hmm. than the McKenna. Yeah. So um, they are different. Yeah. I mean, I asked you that question a little bit, uh, just poking at you, because yeah. they don't taste the same. They don't. And, and you know, like I said, I think I, I recognize what's good about this now, and that's that's something that I couldn't before. I was just like, well, this is, you know, whiskey. But now I'm like, okay, I get it. There's, there is a lot to this whiskey mm-hmm. that I quite like. Um, it's just not my favorite and I don't want to stand in line for it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if, if it was still on the shelf for 30 bucks everywhere. Or, You'd or have s- a bottle. Yeah. Or if somebody was pouring it at a party, yeah, of course I would drink it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just, I don't understand how, uh, I, I don't understand the fascination with it in terms of the, the, the price jump and the allocated status and all this. It, it is a completely a wonderful whiskey, mm-hmm. and I get that. Yeah, but it's not my wonderful whiskey. I'll tell you this too: they, um, <clears throat> and this, some brands are just like this, and I, I can't explain it. But probably the most variation in a single expression of a whiskey that I've been around mm-hmm. is this. Yeah, I've because I've got a pile of these bottles, and I'll open some of them up. The last one I had open, yeah. was was maybe one of the top three whiskeys I've ever tasted in my life. Oh wow! The one I had open before. He's all right. How's, it, how's this one stack up? <laughs> this is uh, kind of middle of the road. Middle of the road. Yeah, it's yeah. not. 
it's not blowing my mind. The finish lasts. Uh, the flavors are there. It just doesn't, yeah. it doesn't envelop your mouth sure. like the best ones do. Yeah. I don't know why they're so, I mean, they're single barrels, so they're going to vary. But yeah. even if you go back to Russell's single barrels, Russell's they just don't seem to vary all that yeah. much. They're, they're all really, really, really good. And yeah. every once in a while, there's one that just absolutely blows your mind. Yeah. The McKenna's are never bad to me. Yeah. But a bunch of them are okay, yeah. and and every fourth or fifth one is just oh my Mind goodness, blowing. I can't believe how good this is. Yeah. But but there's a lot of variation, and, yeah. and and I haven't had nearly as many of the Heaven Hill bottled and bonds as I had these, mm-hmm. but they don't seem to have that. I don't know if it if it comes with age. Mm-hmm. There's a point where it would have been really good, mm-hmm. and then after that point, you're dealing with kind of agey whiskey. I mean, yeah. it's in new barrels, and maybe that's the difference. And you know, some of them just come out nice, and right. some of them don't. And at seven years, there's not as much of that variation, or yeah. even at the eight to ten years, you think uh, an Elijah Craig small batch is. Mm-hmm. But something about these is a lot of variation. Yeah. So I think that's something else too to put in there. Again, not sure if it's a do or a don't. Maybe maybe the don't is don't give up on a whiskey if you don't mm-hmm. like it the first time. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's some you just know I'm never going to like this whiskey. But yeah. if you just think, well, I don't know about that. Yeah. Especially if you're on a single barrel, yeah. give it another chance. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. For and sure. and also if if you get an amazing one, don't assume that they're all going to be that way. Right, right. They may or may they they may not. Yeah, there's variation for yeah. sure. So yeah. give it give it another shot, and and you're gonna. We said it earlier. You're going to buy some stinkers once in a while. I mean, mm-hmm. it just it just happens. I mean, yeah. I, I stumbled into that malted rye thing. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand why AD Laws whiskey just turned me the wrong way. And yeah. come to find out, I just don't care for malted rye. Doesn't yeah. mean the whiskey's not well. And that's good. not the only one that you've had with correct. Malted rye yeah. Now yeah. I run across that from time to yeah, time. Yeah. The piggyback, I think, is one that's got mm-hmm. a little bit in there. Yeah. Um, you run across it from time to time, but I don't give up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't. Mm-hmm. I think importantly too, when you're in styles, if that was if if eighty laws rye was the first rye whiskey I ever tasted, yeah. I'd never drink another rye whiskey. Yeah, yeah. So you got to keep trying that yeah, stuff because it sure. does vary even within the brand. Yeah. I think um, a good uh, do is one that you've sort of hammered into my head over over time. Here is uh, do find a place where you can actually sit and focus on the whiskey rather than just going to the bar, mm-hmm. sitting at a loud noisy bar, and you know trusting, you know, that this, that the stuff on the shelf hasn't been watered down or yeah. whatever, you know, bring it home, uh, sit with friends somewhere comfortable, somewhere where you can, you know, kind of focus on it. Um, well, wouldn't you want to taste it? I, I don't mm-hmm. want to discourage anybody from, yeah, you might, have, the bar a, might be your place, might be your place to yeah. hang out and do things. But yeah. if you really want to experience what you, you know, figure out what you know about the whiskey or think yeah. about the whiskey, I think it helps to have a consistent place to do that. Yeah. That's free of other distractions. My garage, for example. Dan's garage <laughs> is a fabulous place for that. It is. It is a quite an interesting garage. I will point out that since the last time I was in the garage, you seem to stop the uh, the gas smell emanating yeah. from the motor. Does the motorcycle roll now? Or the motorcycle roll? works. I I rode it yesterday. How about that? I know miracles do happen. I have to hotwire it to get it started. <laughs> <laughs> you have to steal your own motorcycle. Yes, I, I, there is some motorcycle theft every time I started, but <laughs> uh, well, and that just plays right into it. Don't give up. Yeah. Dan didn't give up. Otherwise there'd still be gas poured yeah, all over the garage. I just found another way. <laughs> <laughs> and that other way is theft, you know? <laughs> oh, good things. Yeah. The money. Right. Well, there's do's and don'ts. Yeah. I think, I hope that helps. Yeah. I think, um, I just want people to relax. I don't mm-hmm. want people to think that, um, they have to go from, knowing nothing to knowing everything so mm-hmm. quick. And frankly, it's fun to be new at something. One of yeah. the things, I mean, I, I tend to learn a lot of new things. I enjoy that. Mm-hmm. I enjoy that process of being yeah. new at something, the discovery of it. So don't, totally. don't sell yourself short of that enjoyable period yeah. if you decide whiskey is one of your yeah. things. I have one more do before we wrap this all up. Are, okay. are we ready to wrap this up? Are I we? think we're ready to wrap oh, okay. it up. Can I do one more do? It's, yeah. a, it's a do-do. Do-do. It's a do-do. <laughs> <laughs> we're children. <laughs> yeah, <I see. laughs> The do is do do away with your preconceived notions of brands. Uh, and the reason I bring that up is because my first experience with, with whiskey, as I've told you, was on a backpacking trip when I was 16. And I, uh, I found myself in a, in a hut on the Appalachian Trail. And this guy showed up just in the dark out of the woods and he shared the hut with us and he had a big handle of wild turkey. And that was a bad experience for me. And now I love wild turkey. <laughs> Don't give up. <laughs> be Dan. Be Dan. Be Dan. Be Not, on the trail. Yeah. Be open to experiences, even when they're bad experiences. Yes. Come back to them. Yes. <laughs> uh, we all have that. This has been good. I think. I uh, hope it helps. And if it, you know, if you think about this, or you're trying to get into whiskey, or you're trying to bring your friends into whiskey, and 
something we said resonated or you think we're off, I mean, please let us know. Go to the, the practicalstill.com. The ask button is there. Let us know what you think. And can we do something different? Did this, did this help you bring a friend into whiskey? Yeah, I hope it. Uh, I hope it helps somebody anyway. And if uh, if you want to show up to my garage with a bottle of whiskey and try it out, you, you don't know where I live. But uh, <laughs> I tell you what, it helped me a lot. Dude. Yeah. It's good to be back here and hanging out. Oh, with for you. sure, absolutely. I'm glad to be in the garage with you. Me too. And uh, I'm glad the cars are driving by. It's, yeah, it's, uh, I'm glad the sun's shining. I'm glad everything. It's a good day. Cheers, Dan. Cheers. Cheers.